Now, where would we put the chlorine to, have, to make this the most acidic? Should we put it at the OP positions or at the M positions to make this the most acidic? At the O positions. That's right. Or the P positions. Or the P. Why? Because since this is electron withdrawing, it's going to be most effective when it's as close as possible to the negative charge. Well, if it's at the O position, it would be next to this negative charge in this resonance structure. Or if it's at the P position, it would be next to the negative charge in this structure. Now, uh, if it's at the P position, is that just by the, the way the ring is shaped and the minute distance? Would it still be? Uh, uh, would it still have more of effect in the O position, just because of uh, not only the negative charges on the O and P, but also because they're both electronegative atoms so close together? Yeah, that's a good question. That, 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 that's a good thing to think about. I don't really have a great answer to that. Okay. Um, I don't know. So I think that would probably be more subtle than you would be expected to get into. That's good thinking. But whether there's a difference in um, acid base effects between putting the electron withdrawal at the O or the P position, I don't think we'll have to get into that. Okay. Uh, especially because, uh, of course, it's true that if the chlorine is down here, then it's further away from the negative charge in this resonance structure, but it's closer to the negative charge in this resonance structure. Whereas if the chlorine was at the O position, it would be closer to the negative charge in this resonance structure, but further from the negative charge in this resonance structure. So I suspect it doesn't make a big difference where, uh, for acid-base reactions. For acid-base reactions, I suspect there's not much difference between the O and the P positions. You don't want to confuse that with a different idea from electrophilic aromatic substitution, Remember that when you're adding new substituents, if you have an O and P director, you usually do get more P direction than O direction because of steric hindrance. But steric hindrance isn't really a big issue for acid phase effects. Okay. So which of these two would we say is more acidic? With the chlorine at the O position or at the M position? Uh, at the uh, O position. That just confirms what we said. Just said. This would be the most acidic. That doesn't mean that the chlorine isn't helping here. It's just not helping as much as it would in this picture. This is still more acidic than this picture over here. So does this have the highest of the pKa's or the lowest of the pKa's? It's going to have uh, like, uh, the lowest of the pKa. That's right, yeah. lowest pKa. That's the most acidic. And if the hydroxy was already on the benzene ring, naturally that's where you would expect the, uh, the substitution to take place at the O? At the O and the P yeah. positions. That's right. If we had somehow started with phenol, yeah. and then we wanted to add a chlorine, well, we um, doing electrophilic aromatic substitution, the chlorine would tend to add at the O or the P positions. Okay. That's right. So if for some reason you were not satisfied that this was acidic enough and you wanted to make it more acidic, you could add a chlorine at the O or the P positions okay. very easy using that electrophilic aromatic substitution. That's right. Now, how about, say, a nitro group? Let's not worry about the position of the nitro group yet. Let's just say we put a nitro group on. Does the nitro group tend to make the phenol, would you think, more or less acidic? Uh, it's uh, making it. Yeah, that's important to know. I think there's a, there's a, there's a positive charge. That's right. And that actually is correct. But that would be a good thing to make a flashcard of because that is important. So this is the Lewis structure for a nitro group. That's something that we should make a flashcard of and memorize. Okay.
And that's the right answer. What was the reasoning there? Um, well, I just thought an induction alone mm -hmm. with nitrogen and the two oxygens mm -hmm. would be, uh, they would be withdrawing. That's the key thing. You have to decide whether this is electron donating or withdrawing. That's right. Uh, and you're right. It is electron withdrawing. And would that make the phenol more or less acidic? That's right, because an electron withdrawer would help to stabilize the negative charge that we would have after we lose the proton. After we lose a proton, an electron withdrawer would help to stabilize this negative charge. So the nitro group did make this more acidic. That's right. Is it by induction? It would be partly by induction. However, remember that usually resonance is more important than induction. So we should really focus more on resonance. By resonance, uh, now actually in this case, maybe it is mainly by induction, there's a big fat positive charge on this nitrogen. So the positive charge that's very close to the ring here makes this a big electron withdrawer by induction. Of course, there's a negative charge here, but it's further away. Sure. What's close is this big positive charge. So by induction, this really is going to be pulling right. the electrons towards it. Uh, but how about by resonance? By resonance, would this be electron donating or withdrawing? Do the resonance structures tend to pull the electrons towards the nitro or push it away from the nitro? Um. Why they push it toward it? Put, pull it. So do they tend to pull? Uh, maybe I didn't express that well. I think what you said was right. Um, is the nitro pushing electrons into the benzene or pulling electrons out of the benzene? Pulling electrons out. That's right. Why can't the nitro push electrons into the benzene? Because this nitrogen has no lone pair. That's the key aspect of this Lewis structure. That's the big difference between this and something else you might have seen in the videos like NH2. Yes. The key point is that NH2 does have a lone pair. Mm -hmm. So this can donate electrons by resonance. Which? And this is why you have a, a, a strong activator. That's why NH2 would be a strong activator. That's right. This is a good example of how usually resonance beats induction. By induction, the nitrogen would be pulling the electrons towards it, but that's overwhelmed by this resonance effect. Okay. We know that for halo, uh, for halo for big halogens, resonance isn't too important. But for things in the second period, like nitrogen, this is uh, important. All right, so here the resonance uh, would be pull, pushing the electrons into benzene. But this nitrogen doesn't have any electrons. Instead, where do the electrons in this pi bond want to go? Well, oxygen is more electronegative than nitrogen. So the oxygen tends to pull the electrons towards itself. And then to fill the gap, we pull electrons out of the benzene. So you, clearly, the nitro group is pulling the electrons out of the benzene here by resonance. Okay. And that's even more important than the induction effect. So for a bunch of reasons, this is electron withdrawing. Okay. So where would we? And is that? Yeah, uh, sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Is, um... Oh, no. Okay. Okay. And then the carbon would still be neutral. Which carbon? The carbon connected to the uh, amine. Go ahead and point to the one that you're thinking of. This one. That's right. OK. I was just trying to, I just wanted to. Oh, you just wanted to draw, yeah, I just wanted Why don't you do that? Go ahead and draw the resonance structure. Don't draw it in this picture. Okay. Draw a new picture that shows what the charges would be. Okay. It's not a good idea to actually try to put the charges in this picture. We sure. want to draw a whole new picture that shows that where the charges would be. and finish off your picture. These are things we want to take our time on because it's easy to make mistakes. Got it. Now, as usual, if we just take our time, the arrows should tell us what to do. The arrows are supposed to tell us what to do. And, and, there's, a, and, and then there's um, a positive charge on the nitrogen. There you go. That was the one detail you left out. But since the charges are the most important part, that's a very important detail. Absolutely. So this arrow here tells us that we're forming a new double bond. And it also tells us, since the nitrogen is at the initial tail and it started neutral, that it's gaining a positive charge. Now, this arrow tells us that we're turning the pi bond into a lone pair. 
which was represented by this negative charge, and these two bonds were not affected. So that was a good question you asked. Where would the charges show up after this? Well, the charges would show up like this. And this just confirms that this nitrogen is donating electrons mm -hmm. into the benzene. This nitrogen right. is donating electrons mm -hmm. into the benzene. Uh, and then you can go even further and draw the re next resonance structure. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's one more resonance structure after that. So it's important to be able to draw all those different resonance structures. And again, this is confirming to us when the nitrogen contributes electrons to the benzene ring, which atoms end up with negative charges, O, M, or P? O and P. Yeah, here's the O, and you can see from this arrow that we're going to skip over the M and have a negative charge on the P. So that confirms what we said before. Electron donors donate electrons, especially to the O and the P positions. All right.